Yes, this is uh, CFRO 100.5 FM on the dial, co-op radio, listeners supported radio. And uh, tonight, as part of the Harder the City Festival, the 10th annual Harder the City Festival, we have a live radio play broadcast. And we have, uh, let's see, we have uh, six magnificent actors here and a magnificent sound technician, as well as a controller there, Sylvia Skeen. And I want to thank Sylvia tonight for uh, handling this uh, pod. Of, of actors, as well as at the end, we will thank the various different parties that are part of the Heart of the City Festival. So, the Arts Rational Thursday Night Edition. Tonight is Halloween, and we have a story that can be seen to some as a tad scary, but more to the point a story with community involvement and a positive ending. Is it a story of women's struggle to be heard and recognized? The Raymer Mothers. A radio play reading of scenes with, from, original, with, from the original musical play by Bob Sardi, original music by Bill Sample, directed by Jay Hamburger, produced by Theatre in the Raw for the 10th anniversary of the Heart of the City Festival in association with the Vancouver Moving Theatre. Excerpt 1. This excerpt introduces us to the Raymer Housing Project in East Vancouver and to our four main characters, the single mothers Astrid, Bonnie, and Diane, and Astrid's boyfriend, Richie. Scene, Astrid Coulter's new apartment in the Raymer Housing Project. Yes? Hello. Hi, I'm Bonnie from Next Door, Apartment 4F. Welcome to Raymer, we're the welcome wagon. And I'm Diane, next door on the other side. Not really the welcome wagon, but we thought we'd say hello. Here's a package of cookies. Dad's oatmeal, your housewarming gift. <laughs> well, thank you. Dad's are my favorite. So crunchy. I'm Astrid. Um, I've got some tea on. Come on in. Are you all moved in? Yeah, just the two of us. Lisa and me. What grade is she in? Six. That last school was a bit of a disaster, though. I don't think the teacher understood her. My Tommy's in grade six, too. Seymour School. This your first time in housing, Astrid? Yeah, you know, I was kind of worrying about moving here. I heard so much about the projects, the neighborhood, the junkyards around here, the docks, the beer parlors, Hastings Street. I didn't know what to expect. Yeah, very colorful. But, you know, I had to get away from that dump. Basement suite on Kingsway, rats, mold. I'm hoping that this move is going to be a change for the better. One thing you gotta like here is the rent. It's so cheap. 40 bucks a month for two bedrooms. Yeah, subsidized. You know, what I was paying at the last place, it was killing me. And everything here is still pretty new, so stuff works. You know, my last place, I never knew when the fridge and stove were going to die on me. One time, I lost a week's food. One great thing about Raymer, there's so many kids. You have to have kids to get in here. Everybody's going through the same things, you know? Welfare, single mom, people share a lot of stuff. You know, I'm glad to hear that. I had to move so many times the last few years since I split up with my husband, Rudy. I never got to make any real friends, you know. It's nice that our kids are in the same grades. And I don't think Tommy's too hot on girlfriends yet. I mean, friends who are girls. I know what you mean. Lisa, she's just as likely to hit him with a stick as shake his hand. <laughs> You know, Astrid, Raymer has his good points, but it's not a wonderful around here. Like, they built this place with no playground for the kids. One lousy swing set for a thousand kids. We need a recreation center or a gym. Yeah, and those trains right next to the project? So damn noisy. I saw them. Heard them. The kids have to cross the tracks to get to school. So dangerous. No kidding. Trains always moving, stopping, moving. Somebody's going to get killed one of these days. We need a pedestrian overpass for the kids over the tracks so we can get across and be safe. Yeah, sounds like a good idea. We've been trying to get one. We met with the city, the railroad, wrote letters and petitions. They don't listen. Here, Astrid, sign this. What is it? It's a petition to get the pedestrian overpass over the tracks so the kids can walk across and not get run over by a train. The city has promised to build it, but they're so slow. This rate, the kids will be drawing their pensions before they get around to it. 
Bonnie, I already took a petition out and, and sent it to City Hall. You're just reinventing the wheel. Yeah? Where did your petition go? Well, you've got to give them time. Yeah, time to stall. They already voted and approved the idea for the overpass. I see a lot of talk, but I don't see much walk. Mm -hmm. Bonnie, I thought you said they don't listen to petitions. Well, you've got to do something. Do I have to sign your name? Of course, why not? I don't like to sign things. I've got in enough trouble already signing things. And yeah, like what? Your marriage certificate? They might hassle me. Who? Well, I don't know. Welfare. Uh, don't worry. A lot of people signed. Well, okay. Thanks. That's one small step for Raymer, one giant leap for womankind. Uh, now I wonder who that is. Oh, Richie. It's you. Hey, doll. Richie, where have you been? I thought you were going to help me move. I rented the truck and all. I had to pay two guys to help me. You know, I wanted to, doll. I really did. But I was stuck in the lineup for the Stones concert. I can't get no satisfaction. Stuck in the lineup? Yeah, you know, get the tickets and scalp them. Double my money. You know, so how much did you make? Well, it's a bummer. By the time I got to the front of a the line, they were sold out. No more tickets, all that time wasted. Well, Richie, you could have called. I had to pay those guys to help me. This kind of stuff just happens too much with you. I told you, doll. I was in the lineup. I couldn't leave. Richie, this is Bonnie, my next door neighbor, and Diane. She lives on the other side. They're the welcoming committee. By the way, Astrid, if you're planning on anyone staying overnight at any time, you're going to have to play it cool. There's no overnight visitors allowed in Raymer, you know, men. They think if you're living with someone, he must be giving you money. <laughs> that would be a long shot with Richie. Oh, doll, that hurt. If you get extra money, welfare will dock you. If you want an overnight visitor, you have to sneak them in past Checkpoint Charlie. Watch out for the janitors. They'll think on you. They have inspections for, you know, roaches. They look in the bathroom for an extra toothbrush or men's shoes under the bed or even men under the bed. There are so few men living in Raymer, they stand out like a sore thumb. I've got my own place in Burnaby. Uh, there's no way I'm letting any man cut into my income. I can't afford things as it is now. I run out of money at the end of month, end of the month every month. It's a pit. I just hate being poor. Always go have and go without. Tell the kids no. You know, Diane, poverty's in your head. It's a mental state. You're thinking like a victim. Before me. Well, I don't consider myself poor. <laughs> have you looked at your bank book lately? Yeah, I've got no money, but I'm fighting back. This is only temporary. We'll, we've been up, we've been down, we'll be up again. Well, that's easy to say. Richie, now that your Rolling Stone scheme has fallen through, what are you going to do? Doll, I got something cooking. Like what? You know, a deal. What kind of deal? Ah, doll, it's hush hush. Don't want the competition finding out. When you've got a deal going, you got to work the angles fast, because I am the man. Oh, brother. Come on, Diane. See you around, after. Yeah, bye. What's her problem? I don't know. I just met her. Well, you haven't just met me. Oh, Come what? here, doll. Not now, Richie. Come on. I'm in the mood. I've got to finish unpacking. I'll show you packing. Richie, <laughs> I can't just turn it on and off. Just try, doll. You'd be glad you did. Boy, you think a lot of yourself. Got my mojo <laughs> working. And it's gonna work on you. Oh, yeah. Excerpt 2. This excerpt tells us more about Astrid's relationship to Richie and how Richie and how Astrid started getting involved in the fight at the railroad tracks. Scene. Same suite of Astrid Coulter's apartment one month later. You know, Bonnie, I think Lisa's been shoplifting. Like what? That expensive lipstick. She's too young to even wear it. It happens. A lot of them do it. Where do you think they get their back-to-school clothes from? I'm not happy about it, but I really drew the line with bathing suits. Tommy and his friends, they went into the change room at Army Navy, put them on under their clothes, just walked out. I took the bathing suit away from them. Well, she's taking that lipstick right back. I don't know, Astrid. Think about it. The store will call the cops. You don't want to get them involved. That's the last thing you need. Next thing you'll have to be explaining your Parrington style to welfare. Well, she's not going to keep it, that's for sure. I'm not going to reward thieving. No, of course not. I traded the bathing suit with Patty for a pair of jeans for me. So you benefit from the crime? I never said I was perfect. <sighs> 
Anyway, there has to be some kind of punishment for Lisa. Take away something she likes. What's her favorite show? The Partridge Family. You know, I think she's got some kind of crush on David Cassidy. Maybe it would make her think about what she did if she had to miss him for a few weeks. I thought she didn't like boys. No one asked me to explain it. Maybe she likes it because they're all so normal on the show. Cool but normal. They see things on TV. I know what you mean. Other kids have expensive stuff. Oh, Richie, you're finally up. It's almost noon. Good morning, doll. Hey, Bonnie. Gay much lately? Yeah, <laughs> nice to see you too, Richie. I hear they're hiring down at the Longshore Hall, union wages, you know, honest work, but you wouldn't be sleeping in anymore. Nah, I'm through with that 9 to 5 stuff. Beat my brains out for what? You know, if you try it, you might like it. A lot of guys don't hey, think it's so bad. Look, regular paycheck. Hey, I did try it. It's not for me. You had a real job? Yeah. Lankirk Electric down on Marine Drive by the river. We went on strike just to get a contract. They said it was illegal. 300 guys kicked out. Scabs got our jobs. I got arrested. Lost my job. For what? Never again. Now I got a better way of doing things. Anyway, I'm out of here. Going to work. Gotta see a man about a horse. Bye, doll. Bonnie. Richie, you didn't eat anything. Who's got time to eat when you got a hot feel on? Here, take a bite. Thanks, doll. See you later. Oh, brother. What do you see that guy anyway, Astrid? You're selling yourself short. You could do better than that. Well, he's got some good qualities. He really does. Yeah, like what? Besides being good in the back. Your own personal Stanley Kowalski. I don't know any Stanley. You know, from the movie Streetcar Named Desire. Stella! Stella! Scruffy guy, but she couldn't resist him. He was such a sex machine. Martin Brando. <laughs> You compare your Richie to Marlon Brando? Well, you know, sex machine. Bonnie, I told you that in confidence. I don't want it getting around. What's the matter? Are you afraid of competition if Diane finds out? Bonnie! Ha <laughs> okay, okay. My lips are sealed. But really, what do you see in him? Well, it's not just a sex thing. <laughs> no, really, it's not. A, you know, he has some really good qualities. Oh, and what would those be? Well, let me think. Let's see, well... He means well, he really does. Yeah, don't they all? Okay, I know. He's good with Lisa. Great, two kids in the house, just what you needed. And then he likes animals. Yeah, as long as he's got money riding on their nose. Well, what do you expect from him? He's a guy. Guys are guys. I'm not that perfect either. Myself, I have three minimum requirements before they get near me. Number one, they don't drink. Well, not too much anyway. Number two, they keep their hands themselves. You know, non-violent. And three, they're solid, like self-supporting. That's asking a lot. That's why I'm still looking. Now, did you call the alderman about the overpass? Not yet. What's holding you up? I wrote the letter you wanted. Isn't that enough? You've got to keep the pressure on. What about you? Believe me, I've called plenty of times. When they hear me on the phone, they tell the secretary to say they're out. Go ahead. Make the call. Here's the number. I don't know. I'm nervous. I never talked to a politician before. I'm not like you, Bonnie. I can't get out there. There's nothing to it. They're just people. They put on their pants one leg at a time. Oh, they have one woman alderman now. She's as bad as the rest of them. You know, it just takes practice. You're too shy. You're selling yourself short. No, Bonnie, don't go all dear Abby on me. Ah, right. I'm sorry. Look, just call the alderman. You have to do it. It's for the kids' safety. Oh, all right. Uh, hello, can I speak to Alderman Carmichael, please? Alderman Carmichael, please? It's Astrid Coulter calling. Yes, thank you. Hello, Alderman. My name is Astrid Coulter, and I live in Raymer Housing down on Campbell Avenue. Oh, you do? Good. Yes, I like it. It's home. Um, the reason I'm calling is about the overpass, you know, over the railroad tracks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, we need one. You know, the kids, it's dangerous. They're going to school. It's the law. They
they have to go to school. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, thank you, Astrid Coulter. Thank you. Goodbye. Well, what did he say? He said they're working on it, but it's complicated. That's it? That's all he said? Basically, yes. He said it's complicated? Yes, that's what he said. What is so complicated about kids' safety? It's the same old brush off. If it was Carousel, maybe maybe it wouldn't be so complicated. You know, we're so damn polite. We gotta throw some sand in their gears, like the civil rights marchers. They shut down all those five and tens that were segregated down south. Well, it must have made them take notice. Sit in. They blockaded the lunch counters. Oh, blockade, yeah. Now there's a tactic. Those crazy yippies did the same thing in Vancouver last year, when the Bay wouldn't serve their kids with long hair. Crazy yippies? Yeah. Well, how do I explain the yippies? Uh, never mind. Like Lisa would say, why is it when grown-ups tell you something and you ask them a question, they say, uh, never mind. I'm telling you, Astrid, one of these days, those buggers up at City Hall are going to be in for a surprise when we don't take no for an answer. Anyway... I'm going down to Woodward to get a load of groceries this afternoon. You want to come? We could put a cab on the way back with the bag. Yeah, okay. It's just such a drag around here. No supermarket. Imagine. All those families, no supermarkets. Some of the moms are talking about setting up a food pop right here in Raymer to get food cheaper. Mm. I'm just about out of money this month. The money we get, it just doesn't add up. One forty-five a month for welfare. Take 45 for the rent. Say 10 a week for the food, that's 85 bucks for basic necessities. That leaves 60 a month. Two dollars a day for everything else. Yeah, don't spend it all in one place. How are we supposed to make it on two dollars a day? What do I look like, a magician? I can't make money appear out of nowhere. So, do you want to go shopping? Isn't it supposed to rain this afternoon? Let me check the weather. Boy, this window needs a good cleaning. You know, amazing how much dust comes in here. Let's see. It looks like kind of rainy. Uh. <gasps> oh my god! That's right, what is it? Oh god! Oh god! Lisa! The train! What's wrong? The train! It's sitting there! Bastard, what? Lisa!